And if the right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee, for it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that the whole body should be cast into hell. Dolphin Tattoo Girl brought this passage to my attention with the concern that fundamentalists might use it for female mutilation justification. Of course, Christians and Jews are already okay with male genital mutilation, so why not? It would be the next step. <laughs> why not, you know? Anything to avoid sex, it's not like teaching abstinence only doesn't work. Oh wait, what's that? Yes, it does not work? Oh, well that's okay, we're going to keep doing it anyways and pretend like it works. Female mutilation is a concern, so is male mutilation. There's no reason to do it at all, whether it's female or male. There's no scientific benefit. There's no health benefit. It's just a religious tradition, and the hospital should not have it as a automatic procedure. I think you do have to request it now, but still, they shouldn't even allow it to be a thing. Maybe when the kid's a certain age, they can ask for it themselves. I don't know, even then. If you're an adult, that's different. But as he, you know, what is it, 13 for Jews when they do this normally? I don't think that that's really age of consent material. So I don't think that we should make special exceptions for religion when it comes to things that offer no benefit to the body. If they really want to do it, they can wait a few more years until they're 18. At any rate, uh, Dolphin Tattoo Girl has her own worries about this passage, and they will follow. Be sure to go to her channel and subscribe, like, and comment on some of her videos if you want. Uh, well, not if you want to. Uh, I'm telling you to do it. Uh, so you don't, it's not about want. It's about you do it because I said to. Today, I just wanted to make a short video about religion and my concerns regarding some of the things that Jesus said in the New Testament and how they could be used to justify female genital mutilation, among other things. I wanted to discuss Matthew 5, 27 through 31, and Matthew 18, verses 8 through 9, where Jesus says it's literally better to cut off one of your hands or pull out one of your eyes than to have two hands or two eyes and risk going to hell for eternity. Now, I want to point out that it's quite common for Muslims to practice female genital mutilation even though the Quran does not demand it at any point. The entire book of the Quran, it doesn't say anywhere that you have to do female genital mutilation, but yet a lot of Muslims still somehow find one way or another to justify it. So, keeping that in mind, I don't see that it would be impossible at all for Christians. Matthew 5, 27 through 31, and Matthew 18, 8 and 9, to justify female genital mutilation. Now, I feel that a lot of Christians are already going down this path here in the U.S. I know that some Coptic Christians out in, like, Ethiopia do practice genital mutilation. In the U.S., as far as we know, it, doesn't, it hasn't happened yet, or it's extremely rare, but I'm afraid that the hysterical Christians in this country are going that way. And the reason why I say this is for several reasons, one of them being this new thing they come up with starting in about 2010 called Purity Balls, where girls, and I mean only girls, boys don't have to participate in this at all, where girls are basically socially coerced into going to these dances with their fathers where they actually sign a contract, even if they're under 18, uh, they actually sign a contract uh, making a pledge that they will not have sex until they get married and that they will allow their father to choose their husband for them. I'm not sure if all, I'm not actually, on a second thought, I'm not sure if all the purity pledge contracts say that the father will choose the uh, the spouse for them, but I know that at least in some cases it does. And the the purity pledge always states that the girl will refra refrain from any kind of sexual activity until marriage. 
and boys are not expected to live up to this. Boys are not forced to sign purity pledges or anything like that. All the burden of all the responsibility for sexual activity, premarital sexual activity, is on the girls. And also, um, in 37 states in this country, there's a lot, they don't give any kind of comprehensive sexual education. And they always want to put a lot of shame on sex and see sex as a negative thing unless you're doing it within uh, the confines of marriage. And there's always a lot of blame in these abstinence-only programs, and most of the blame actually goes to the girls. They're always trying to shame girls for allowing themselves to be dirtied by boys or for seducing boys. They don't really blame men or teenage boys, whatever. They don't blame males for their own sexual activity. They all want to place all the blame, all the responsibility, all the shame on the females. I really am concerned that considering the way that sex is seen in 37 states in this country, um, combined with the new uh, practice of purity balls, which is growing and spreading, uh, that eventually some pastor somewhere is going to find Matthew 5, 27 through 31 and 18, 8 and 9 and say that maybe um, it's better to cut off your clitoris and your labia than to risk going to hell with your clitoris and your labia. Because, I mean, it, Jesus was literally telling people to mutilate themselves and I was lied to several times. I had a few people tell me, no, that was in a parable form or he clearly meant it symbolically. But no, I've read those passages myself, they're not inside of a parable, and he speaks very literally. It's not something that he's saying figuratively, and it's not something that he just put inside of a parable. So it's not understood as being symbolic at all. He really is giving this as actual instruction, and I can just hear an evangelical pastor at some point saying, well, you're better off to cut off your daughter's clitoris and your daughter's labia, than to allow her or risk her being a little whore that goes around um, sleeping with men and going into fiery Gehenna after she dies. And so I'm very concerned about these passages and it needs to be addressed in one way or another um, before what I'm predicting actually occurs. Thank you. What's really disturbing about this passage is that even if you were to tear out your eyes and ears and everything else, that under certain doctrines of Christianity, you're still a creature of sin. So you still need to accept Jesus. So none of this really ultimately matters because there's nothing that you can do that will prevent you from sinning at some point in time. So you always need the redemption of Jesus and there's no way out of it. There's no way to avoid sin. If you think any thoughts that you shouldn't think in your head, you've sinned. So I guess you tear out your brain at that point. It's just ridiculous. Sin is a made-up concept in order to keep people uh, upset about what they've done so that they turn back to the religion again for that repentance that the religion said that they need, even though they don't really need repentance in the first place. It's a circular, self-fulfilling well of guilt and repentance. And it's just vile and needs to be exposed as much as possible. That's all I've got for you this time. Make sure to go subscribe to that person or the lobsters will get you.